Good morning. And welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Sarah, this is Scott, and our wonderful violinist, we will lead the music. Please silence all electronic devices, and let's stand and take a moment to greet one another. Please silence all electronic devices. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1283 in your hymnal, and the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you would like on the OSM Parish app, or click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy is Father Schoberly, and preaching is Deacon Jim Bernard. Our gathering song is hymn number 924, As We Gather at Your Table, hymn number 924. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather this week, as I said last week, we have had two Sundays where we're thinking a bit about prayer, and the prayer today fits us between the collector and the Pharisee, and in the midst of both of them to ask, where is our life, and how do we ask for God, how do we ask God for mercy in the midst of that? So let us indeed ask God for mercy. Lord Jesus, you came for the sinful. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came for those who need healing. Christ, have mercy. those who are empty without you, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. First reading, a reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly and affirm the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord. Spirit 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it and I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. 
the Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel parable today tempts us to direct our angst toward the Pharisee and our sympathy to the tax collector. But my heart is with both men because I have been a version of both men. I have been the man that lives in a world of only black and white, no gray, strictly following rules and procedures and protocol, obedient to a fault, overconfident in my efforts until my own arrogance would easily slide my foot in my mouth at the wrong times. And I've been the man on my knees, broken, needy, and begging God for a second chance, but only as a last resort and resistant to making any personal changes needed to cooperate with his mercy. Letting go and letting God, assuming no personal accountability. My lived experience reasons neither the Pharisee nor the tax collector deserve our total disdain, and neither man should exhaust our sympathy. But each man has something to teach us about ourselves and about the spiritual life. Friends, the genius of this gospel parable is that it invites us to the same judgment that we condemn in its reading. The pompous prayer of the Pharisee makes us want to say, at least to ourselves anyway, thank God I'm not like that Pharisee but we need to put the brakes on that judgment for a moment, pause and look at this from another angle, not forgetting the parable's lessons, but remembering both men in the parable are exaggerated intentionally. The truth is there aren't so many people around so proud and arrogant as the Pharisee is made out to be. Likewise, there aren't so many people as humble and submissive as the tax collector. Most people are somewhere in between. And most people, myself included, have some work to do to overcome ingrained blind spots and smooth out some rough edges and bad habits we've acquired over time. I admire the pious practices of the Pharisee, focused on prayer and scripture study, avoiding sin, fasting more often than required by law and tithing, he is going above and beyond. Following every religious law with strict observance, there is no slacking with this guy. I could benefit from more discipline in my spiritual life. I wish I could be more like him. I also admire the humility of the tax collector, honest about his state of life, who he is, and his need for help. He cries out to God in faith for mercy, knowing that while he doesn't deserve it, God will come to his assistance. I could benefit if I relied on God more often instead of only on myself. If I stopped trying to muscle through my problems alone, I wish I could be more like him. When we hear gospel parables, it's helpful to ask ourselves who I am in this story. Am I the Pharisee or am I the tax collector? Or be careful here, am I God? Might it be worth considering becoming as devout as the Pharisee and as humble as the tax collector? But before we go all rainbows and unicorns here searching for silver linings, there are a few things that need being pointed out. The Pharisee believed he was superior to the tax collector because of the things he had done. The Pharisee, setting the bar so high for himself and having been successful, 
Everyone else falls short naturally in comparison, and for this, he congratulates himself. In patting himself on the back, to the extent he does, he creates a great chasm between him and every other person, committing the granddaddy and root of all sins, the sin of pride. He doesn't credit God with all the factors that set him up for his success, the social components he had zero input into his family of origin, his health, his education, his status, all the benefits of life without hardship that contributed to him being able to keep such a disciplined regimen. The, the reality is the playing field is not equal for all believers, is it? The Pharisee believes he can and has attained righteousness on his own merit. He doesn't recognize that justification is not transactional, that it is not earned like a paycheck or time off for good behavior. Therefore, he doesn't ask God for anything, and as a result, he receives nothing. Moreover, there's no reason for him to go deeper into his spiritual journey because he's already accomplished everything and thanked God for being a spectator to his crowning achievements. The tax collector, on the other hand, was ashamed because of what he had done. He reasoned he had two choices, pray for God's mercy or let the chips fall where they may. He makes the right choice. He asks God for mercy and his request is granted. And we remember every time we come to God with a contrite and humble spirit, God dwells with us, and God's mercy is boundless. However, tax collectors were notorious for being greedy and dishonest. They were despised by society and considered religiously unclean as a result. Remember, Jesus was criticized for hanging out and eating with tax collectors who were considered known sinners. So while the tax collector demonstrates his humility and his right prayer intentions, he needs to add a prayer or two, asking God to give him the strength to change his ways and help him avoid sinful behaviors in the future. The fact is, we're not God, and we can't do it alone. We're all sinners in need of God's grace. The best thing we can do is to live this truth humbly, consciously aware that we are 100% God-reliant for everything. The Apostle Paul declares this in our second reading. He acknowledges the success of his evangelization, but gives the glory to God. He confesses, the Lord stood by me and gave me strength. If we recognize our dependence on God, it follows that we shouldn't be shy about asking for help and then thanking God for every blessing, opportunity, and even the challenges in our lives. And as Sirach reminds us, God doesn't play favorites. Whether you're a Pharisee or a tax collector, a CEO or a high school student, a right-wing politician or a left-wing activist, all who serve God are heard, and God will judge justly and affirm the right. God is the agent of justification. Only he can dole out the humbling and the exalting. A final thought, maybe a happy byproduct of today's parable, you might say, is the opportunity to think about how we can see the goodness, the Christ-like qualities in all people. Instead of making comparisons, what if we leaned into the reality that we are all both blessed and flawed? That as the poet and activist Maya Angelou wrote in her poem, Human Family, that we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. 
Why not honor one another's efforts? Help each other when we need help. Celebrate our strengths and work to overcome our weaknesses so that we can all enter and remain in right relationship with God. Why not? Let us together proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence that God hears our prayers, we humbly offer these petitions for ourselves and for all who are in need. That those who govern nations will choose diplomacy over violence when dealing with differences, we pray. Lord, hear us that we, the Church, will admit our sinfulness before God and seek forgiveness and reconciliation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Give grace to all who are working for the spread of the gospel. Draw to deeper faith all members of this community, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. You fashion human lives in your own image and likeness. Renew among your people a readiness to nurture and sustain your precious gift of life. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick will experience healing and relief from pain. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died, especially Paulette Letty, will inherit the crown that awaits them in heaven. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in prayerful silence. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our candidates for baptism and full communion, who I neglected to dismiss but who have headed out, for them and their journey of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who join us online this week and every week and the prayers that they may be asking from their home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and ever-loving God, accept our prayers as we place them before you with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Sunday, throughout the Catholic world, we have a special collection. It is World Mission Sunday. On World Mission Sunday, we gather the resources of finances to take the message of the gospel to all those corners of the world.
world for people who have not heard about Christ, who have not uh, had the chance to accept that and understand it. So as usual with second collections, the first collection today is for the good of the parish. The second collection will be for world missions, for outreach. You will find envelopes in the pews. You may have them with you. You can just put them in the second, uh, the donation in the second basket. It will all go toward World Mission Sunday and the outreach of the church. And uh, thank you always for contributing, those who contribute in person in the basket, those who send in their contributions online via the Give app or the, the Give button on the website as well as the app, and those who mail their contributions. Thank you all for your generosity. Please join in singing hymn number 693. I want to walk as a child of the light. Hymn number 693. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O 
Oh Lord, look on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the works of your wisdom, but with your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. And now as your church makes her pilgrim way, her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. God, you are indeed holy and to be glorified, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on this oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. 
And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Paul, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. The words Jesus taught us, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you, but I Blessed are 
in God's holy reign. Blessed are the sad, for comfort is yours through sorrow and pain. Blessed are the meek, for you will inherit what long was denied. Hungry, thirsty ones, your longing for justice will be Let us pray. O Lord, may your sacraments perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Thank you all for joining us once again in prayer and worship 
here live and in person and there live and online. Thank you all for being here. Let's continue to pray and care for each other. As you probably know, the information about all the stuff going on at Old St. Mary's is available through the parish bulletin, which is available in the commons. We also have our parish website, oldstmarys.com, and our parish app, the Old St. Mary's Parish app, uh, that has all the information as well. A couple of things that we want to highlight. Um, this weekend, members of our domestic violence ministry here at Old St. Mary's are present in the commons to receive donation for the House of the Good Shepherd. The House, part of Catholic Charities, provides shelter and support services for abused women and their children. There is a current need for shoes for the children and teens who are currently living there. The contributions you give will be used to purchase those shoes in the sizes needed and to support the house in other ways. You can uh, make a donation in cash or checks payable to the House of the Good Shepherd, no matter how great or small, they're appreciated. Or you can always use the Give button at the parish website. You can make a contribution there as well. So thank you for your help and your donations with that and today's uh, World Mission Sunday collection. I think we have some guests and visitors and first timers with us today. If you're if you're any of those categories, if you'd wave your hands, let us welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Now and I, I think I understood last night there's like a, a packing materials convention. Something like that? Okay, I'm getting head nods. So that's down in McCormick Place, and some of you are obviously here from that. So uh, we give you a chance to uh, pack on some pounds in the commons today. There, there's some refreshments after Mass, and I invite you to be first in line to get to know the people and for us to know you. Thank you all for being here. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go now to share the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing hymn number 692, Christ Be Our Light. Hymn number 692.